Now, last, last time I spoke to you, uh, I had, you hadn't seen the movie. I don't think you'd seen a cut of it or something. I, am, I saw it last night. I am curious what your feeling about the movie is. And having seen the finished version, what works, what may not work. I'm just curious what you um, I have still, I have still seen, uh, the version I saw was still uh, earlier than what you saw. Um, but I have to say, you know, I, I don't know if we talked about this already. Um, as a writer, you dread, you know, I, I dread director's cuts. Uh, and I can say that being married to a director, I did. Um, it's always dicey to say that uh, when one is married to a director. But what's true is, as a writer, you've seen the whole movie in your head, you know. You've seen every uh, detail, and and it's in what's in the, the movie that's in your head it costs gazillions of dollars. So you can't course, actually. So it's never going to be exactly what you see. So um, inevitably, what shows up on film is a bit of a disappointment sure. because you know the imagination uh, is much bigger than any. Other exactly, uh, and I've seen a lot of my work on screen being a television writer. You know, um, but. So when I when I went in to see New Moon, I was you know as always wary, but like ten minutes into the film, I started smiling. Really? I, I did. I was thinking to myself, I get to put my name on this. Uh, you know, I was I was really genuinely like, wow, this is good. It's a big movie. It's a lush movie. It's uh, beautiful. You know. So right. I I have to say. Uh, I am really, I, have, I am really enthusiastic about it. You, you just never know uh, when you hand a, your script over to the director what's going to happen. Uh, and you know, the, you know, the best you kind of hope for in many ways is it's not always in my mind. It's different. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, but so to actually go and see what's on screen and say it's better, yeah. that happens rarely. Okay. I got to tell you the one. The one I had about the movie, and I brought it up to you in our last conversation based on the market. Mm. And I heard you guys up on the stage a few minutes ago when you talked about it. Um, personally, and it got laughs in the critics thing, they did way too much chest bearing. In this movie. <laughs> and, and the worst is when Taylor, which is bleeding, the camera goes under Taylor's and rip up his shirt and get. I'm, I'm telling you, Ed, it's in the book. It had to. Oh, I believe it's in the book. It's I believe in, it's the, in book. the book. I had that to put it in there. To be in the movie. Yes. That much of it, really. I think I would have been tarred and feathered. I think Chris would have been tarred and feathered had we not put it in there. Well, I it is fair just fair and say that this is a forty-nine-year-old man <laughs> commenting <laughs> on uh, a bunch of you know tw teenagers running around without shirts on for thirteen-year-old girls. Yeah. So maybe it doesn't matter what you know what somebody like my age. Thinks. Yeah. I mean, it's see, as you know, it's because it, it, you know you, you see this particularly when you see them in the trailers and it's like oh shirtless, shirtless, and you're going okay, they're pandering. But, um, and, and maybe Stephanie was pat pandering from the beginning. I don't think yeah. so. It, it goes to the mythology. These guys run at 104 degree temperature or something. You know, they're, very, they're, they're hot. I mean, physically hot. And it's an essential part of the, uh, of the mythology of the werewolves. And, and the contrast between the, the heat that they generate and the coldness of the vampires. And that's why one of her chapters in Eclipse, I believe it is, is called Fire and Ice. Okay. Uh, so, and that scene, I, I, mean, I don't mean to defend the, oh, well, the chest bearing, yeah, but the, the, uh, that particular moment you're talking about of uh, him pulling off his shirt so he can, that's a, such an important moment in their relationship. It is the moment in which she, for the first time, looks at him and says, hey, you're kind of beautiful. And, and it is a, a bit of a shift for her. You see her beginning to take in, oh, he's not, y yes, he's my buddy, but you know what? He's kind of hot. So you, right. it's, it's an important evolution in their relationship. I wonder if we needed a reaction shot from Kristen, because I don't think we get a oh. reaction shot. Because I think that would have sold that. When, when you say it like that, it's like, oh, that makes perfect sense. But oh, that's I, interesting. I don't think we get a reaction shot of her looking, even though she's bleeding. You still, you might have wanted a reaction shot from her to convey what you're saying. Huh. Uh, I, I don't remember if there were... I, yeah, uh, I question, I question for Chris, really. Yes, I do. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a good question, though. No, it's an absolutely valid question. But, um, no, and also when we spoke last, because we've spoken so much about New Moon Ray, I'm curious, you started working with David Slade a little bit mm -hmm. on, on this one, and you're very excited about working with him, because uh, I think you were more involved with the clips than you were in New Moon, because Chris is also a writer, I think he's told Yeah. Right, if I remember. It's in that article. Where's that article? Yeah. And uh, so I'm curious how what's happened since then in terms of the collaboration. Well, one of the things that happened on New Moon was I went immediately from New Moon to Eclipse. Mm -hmm. 
and then from Eclipse on to Dexter. And so the, it, I wasn't really available to be involved. And Chris is pro, because Chris is a talented screenwriter, he didn't really need me to be there to uh, do changes or something. He could really handle it himself. Um, so but then when we came to Eclipse, uh, David Slade is not a writer, and so he um, is very used to working with writers, you know, so he's uh, very collaborative. He is very strong visually. He is an artist, so he storyboards everything down to oh, really? the most minute details. Yeah, which is a lot of fun for me uh, to, you know, he, he when we're talking about an action sequence or something, he can talk to me, show me mm -hmm. what it is he has in mind, and I can reshape the scene, the action scene I've written to, to actually go more into it. So, you know, I start by, you know, I've written the script, I have the action sequence. He'll then take that and, and you know, do whatever he does to it, and then I come back and I re, you know, so all of my rewrites can really be tailored to his visions, really. Right. So, and, and that continued on through, he really stays true to this original storytellers. He's not at storyboards. He's not um, one who likes to change it up. He does a lot of work going in. Which is know? good. That prep yeah. sometimes. Especially he, when you probably assume the budget's not as much larger than it was. So you damn well better prep right, in exactly. detail. Yeah. So, uh, so I stayed with it you know, through to the end of mm -hmm. continuing to make whatever changes we need to make. Right. Yeah. You know, when we collaborate with people, we're, we, you know, we're always theoretically learning something from that collaboration. I, I, I've asked you before the differences between Catherine and Chris and David. For you personally, though, have you quote unquote learned anything from Catherine and Chris and David? Absolutely. Um, uh, how can I quantify that, though? Um, oh. <laughs> I just asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, for Catherine, you know, I really learned. Uh, I learned about this series. You know, uh, and it's about the she really helped me find the tone. She set the tone as the first director. Um, when I was writing I, I, the, the first draft, I didn't uh, at first answer. Second draft, actually. I didn't know who the actors were. Mm -hmm. And I tend to lean toward comedy a little bit, very black comedy, if you, as you might yeah, notice in Dexter, yeah. Um, but I was adding a lot more uh, humor and comedy into the script than, than um, and then it got onto Rob and Christy, you know, they, they became those characters, and it was inappropriate. It just didn't work, you they're know. Not funny people. Well, the, in the book, <laughs> it's not, really yeah, the characters are not funny people, and the, and the tone of the book is not about humor, it's, uh, you know. And uh, so that's the stuff that we started stripping out. And, and, and Catherine really uh, helped me, moving forward into New Moon, know what the tone was. You know, she set the tone. And so then uh, for Chris, um, he was very, Chris is very uh, a master at condensing, you know. And so I had, I think I, I can't remember how long the script was. It was like 123 pages or something. We had to take it down to 111. He really... He did that. I mean, he was the one who took it down, uh, and so and combined a couple scenes into in the center to really play. And, and so I learned a lot about uh, you know that the condensing. And David is you know he's such a, a visual stylist. It was really about learning how to work with an artist and a, you know a visual artist, and um, you know that was a really great collaboration. Will that help you in the future sort of paint visually as you're writing? I think yes, it will. It helps me anytime I'm working with a director uh, on on action sequences, it helps me to write them in the future because I know what's physically possible, what's right. not and you know, so yeah, they've they've all three helped me become a better writer.